Right, right, Linda. Right, off we go. Declarations of interest. Members are reminded of the legal requirements concerning the declarations of interest. Does anybody have any declarations of interest? No. Uh, no? no. If not, no. possibly we'd like to declare it at the time. Right. Minutes to approve or otherwise the minutes of the meeting held on March the 5th. Can I... I'll second that. Yeah, can I... Can I make one point on that, uh, please? Uh, one point of reference is um, agenda item. Let me find the page. Yeah, one two two. Excess water uh, near the Club Springs development. Oh I yeah. Thought, I thought that was going to be on a, a, a an update on a regular basis, but I notice it's not on this meeting. Could we have it on the next meeting, please? Yes, I'm sure we can organise that. It's, yes. Cheers. Obviously, of course, with the fine weather, it hasn't been... It, well, it, ex exactly. This, this is where I was hoping they would do any work they were going to have to do mm. in this weather to try and... Yeah. Uh, Carlo, do you know anything about further about that? Well, all we know, we've got, uh, they have a grant, uh, I haven't heard nothing since, I haven't seen no, I spoke, I spoke to Graham, the farmer, he had objects and people going to spills, uh, nothing else apart from that, to be honest. Right. So. Chairman, I can ask for an update and I'll email it round to members. I don't if think you would please, go on those like, items yeah. on the agenda at the moment. I think that might be easier, yes. Yes, so. please. Can I, can I just Thank ask as well, well members... Linda, can I just ask the members to mute themselves unless they're actually speaking? Because there's a lot of background noise. So if everybody wants to mute and then unmute when you want to speak. Thank you. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Oh, we've got Catherine with us now. Hi, Catherine. Good afternoon, Chair. Apologies. <laughs> You're quite all right. Because we're just about to come into yours now. I thought you might be. <laughs> yes. Everybody happy with the meet minutes of the meeting held on March the 5th? Yes. Right. right. Thank you. All in favour of the minutes? Yeah. Uh, yes. 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 Turner. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. Councillor Newman. Yep. Yes. Fine. Right, fine, thank you. So now we come on to our planning applications, of which we've got three. Now, first one, we were expecting Mark Sugden. Do we know whether he's here yet? Yes, Mark Sugden is with you. Um, he will just need to unmute his mic. Right. Hello, Mark. Can anybody see Mark? Can I see Mark? Hello? Yes, I'm here. You're here? I'm here, yes, yeah, sorry about that. Well, I can't see you though. Uh, no, I've got the camera off, sorry. Oh, I've put the camera on, it does help. So. Okay. Right, so welcome Mark. So you Thank you. Speak, you want to speak in favour of Planning application 20 stroke 0243 full. And it is the construction of two three bedroom detached dwellings and a pair of semi detached dwellings on the garage side. Yes. Back of Gisborne, Gisborne Road, Black Oak. That's it, yeah. <laughs> oh, where are you going then? Uh, since the last application and subsequent refusal of the grounds of a cramped layout and the design of the dwellings. Uh, we've obviously taken into consideration all committee's concerns. Uh, planning came to us with committee's thoughts and comments with regards to the design and the new scheme. Uh, and we've worked with the planning department and by reducing the three detached dwellings to two, uh, this has decrapped the site uh, and thus significantly expanding the curtilages of plots one and two, as per your comments on, on the previous. Uh, with plots three and four, uh, the cottages, this would bring the properties more in keeping with the immediate surroundings uh, and fit in more, again, 
uh, as per your concerns and comments. Uh, and hopefully with us listening and understanding your concerns and comments and working with the planning department on a new scheme, uh, hopefully we've come up with a suitable scheme for your approval. Right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Mr. Sengden. Does anybody have any questions you'd like to ask, Mr. Sengden? Sorry? Oh. Any questions you'd like to ask? Myself? I'm happy to, happy to answer questions. Yes, yeah. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, anybody, any questions? Uh, no, not from me. No? No? Uh, apologies, Chair. Councillor Ken Turner has uh, a question to raise. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Have, uh, Madam Chair, can I have a question from Blackhawk Parish Council, please? You can indeed, yes. Blackhawk Parish Council. Okay. Um, we feel that we would like this to be uh, developed, but we don't feel that this offering goes any way to enhance the area at all. The, the detached dwellings just do not fit. And we feel that it wants developing, definitely, but this doesn't this doesn't do it in in a in a sensitive manner. So what actually would you like to see? Sorry? What actually would you like to see? What would we like to see? Yeah. If you remember the meeting we had, there was a slight typo in the planning where it said seven cottages mm -hmm. and I smiled and said that might be rather more appropriate and that's what that's we expected to see a development that reflected entirely the surrounding properties the one exception in the area is the applicant's own property but we feel cottages no no detached dwellings entirely cottage development in sympathy with the adjacent buildings mm -hmm. Right, well, I do take your point on that, but unfortunately, this is the application we have in front of us, and this is the application we are deciding on today. So, I mean, it has been recommended for approval by planning. Catherine, is there anything you'd like to come in on that? Uh, yes, through through you, Madam Chairman. Um, there is a, a, an update report in front of members with, with some slight amendments to the conditions. Um, Mm. Obviously, there are objections to the scheme uh, from the parish council and residents, um, but it is a different scheme to what was submitted last term. Um, we have a pair of semis and detached, and it does comply with policy in terms um, of what is acceptable in housing mix. Um, mm -hmm. and, and therefore, that's why we've supported the scheme. Um, we did approve, um, I think it was three dwellings previously. This one's four. So... That, that slight increase is acceptable, um, but there's nothing in policy that says there must be terrace properties or, or cottages, so therefore it does accord with policy. Thank you very much, Catherine. So, You're welcome. Anybody else? Any other? Councillor Turner, did you wish to...? Yes, yes, please, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, at the last uh, discussion on this application, there was immense concern over the vehicular access onto the main road. I can't see a lot of difference between the two. Um, and, and I'm still concerned with the visibility display and the access onto the main road. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a problem for Lancashire County Council Highways, and they haven't raised objections. Yeah. <coughs> So, I mean, we could not obviously say that we are objecting on highway grounds and they haven't raised objections. I, I, I can appreciate that, Madam Chairman. I was just raising the point because I, yeah. I, I was, we were concerned then and I'm still concerned for that reason. Linda, can you hear me? Who's that? I think Councillor McAvoy wants to speak. Can you hear me? <laughs> Speaker. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello, no. yes I yep. can. Obviously, we, we turned it down last time. I think it was on design and being in yeah. keeping with the area. Is that right? 
Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, I you've seen the Paris Council's opinion. We are keen for the Paris Council, and obviously me as the councillor are keen for something to go ahead. But well, I will be proposing that we review based on the same. Did you get that? Yeah. Uh, no, because some it's. Uh, Oh, I think it's my telephone going off. Oh. <laughs> Can I just remind people to mute unless they're, they're actually talking? Thanks. So, yeah, I will be proposing that we refuse, still based on design. And what in particular? Because we do need a reason. Well, design, we've refused it last time on design. Madam Chair? Yeah. Madam Chair, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Madam Chair? Yes, Brian, I can. It's Neil, actually. <laughs> oh, it's um, Neil, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. The, the reason for refusal will be design because it doesn't comply with paragraph 130 of the National Planning Policy Framework. Is that a valid reason, Catherine? Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, what I was going to add was previously we didn't refuse the application on highway grounds, so we couldn't do that in this case. Um, in terms of the design, we were quite specific last time in the in the limited depth of the garden and the crampness mm. of, of having those three laws detached on that side. We've not got that here. Um, and I know, yes, paragraph 130 is, is design, but you do have to be a little bit more specific in terms of that, because this is a different scheme, and in our view, they have addressed those points. Right, so we basically, I mean, we're still really in this situation. You know, there's not a lot of ground on which to turn this down. So, Chair? Yeah. yeah. So the grounds that we've stated, that wouldn't be if we if we voted on that, would it if it if it was passed, would it go to policy and resources? I'm afraid so. Yes, I th I would say so. Yes. So I, I think through through you, Madam Chair, you would need to be more specific on the design aspect of mm -hmm. it because last time's issues have been addressed, and it would have to be you you couldn't say purely you didn't want detached houses or you wanted cottages mm. um for example because that's that's not in accordance with the policy so we need to be more specific about what the issues were on this particular design and layout for me to be able to consider those so not being in keeping yeah. with the area that doesn't qualify it, it, it through you madam chair it's not really specific enough because there yeah. are detached houses that have been built quite recently and there's no reason why they couldn't be built there with the with the adequate design and separation distances. And there are quite a lot of conditions that have been put on this, so. But the conditions, Madam Chair, will not affect the appearance. The two detached properties were uh, really overdevelopment in relationship to the um, cottage properties. They're just too big, too dominant. Um, I think, Madam yeah. Chair, if you were going to refuse it on that grounds of them being overdevelopment too big and too dominant, then we would have to refer it to Policy and Resources Committee. Yes, I, I don't as, think, as a, as a I think we're on a bit you know, pretty down ground with that. It's, uh, so, but anyway, do you have somebody to second? You have moved that it be refused. Do you have somebody to second that? I would second it. I'm Neil sorry, Hodgson. who was that? Neil Hodgson, I would second it. You would second it, Neil. So you moved, uh, Councillor McAvoy, that it be refused. Yes. Yes, Neil seconded. All in favour of refusing. So I'll go through each councillor individually. Councillor McAvoy? Yes, refuse. Yes, Councillor Turner? Yes. 
Councillor Turner, Turner. Muted. Sorry, sorry, refuse. Refuse. Councillor Newman. Refuse. Councillor Crossley. Well, I'm going to move that be approved, actually. So, have I missed anybody else? Councillor Leonte. Councillor Leonte. Approve or refuse. Approve or refuse. 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 So it is four in favour of refusal and one for approval. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sugden, for attending. Sorry, where, where does that go from here then? Policy resources. Well, it will go to um, policy resources because they have the final say. Um, and you will be invited to attend their meeting and speak at their meeting. And right. members of the commi this committee, of course, can attend and speak at that meeting. Do, do we know, Joanne, when it is? It's the 25th of June at 2 p.m. 25th, oh, it's at one of these, isn't it? Yes, so if yeah. you want to speak at that meeting, Mark, if you want to get in touch with me. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, will do. Yeah. OK, thank you very much, Mark. Right, thank you very much. So he's still with you, Catherine. And we're going to New Church. Uh, planning application 20 stroke 0 2 0 3 stroke. And it's um, permission in principle, which is something that I must admit is new to me. But what we are doing, we are giving permission for uh, this planning application in principle. Catherine, perhaps you could explain this a little bit. Uh, yes, through through you, Madam Chair. Um, it's it's a new, well, newish type of application um, that people can make. Um, it, it doesn't look at the technical aspects at all. It is purely, as it says, um, planning permission in, in principle for development and in this case uh it's up to four residential we on mm. that one, about two residential dwellings yes. um at yes. so mm. it's recommended for approval um and members are asked to consider that and what they would need to do is submit a technical application um at a later stage so it's similar to an outline of reserve matters but different in terms of what you can consider So, I mean, this we are actually, in principle, giving permission. Uh, Madam Chair? Yes, Brian. Yes. Hello? Hello, Councillor Newman. Right. Madam Chair, I, I would uh, like to approve this uh, application as it stands, looking at it, as just an infill. Uh, and uh, I don't see any problem with it whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kelsey. And you, yes, looking where it is, I think it is in Phil. Yes, Councillor Turner. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, I went to view this site, and it is an in Phil. And uh, the benefits, are, I'm concerned on the PIP. Uh, because I think that PIPs can raise concerns later because uh, once it's had permission in principle, um, I'm concerned how much we're going to be able to control it afterwards. However, on this particular site, um, if you look at it uh, by putting the two pr pr uh, properties where they're locating them on the front of there, it will in fact have an impact have not been able to develop the field at, below it and will cut down uh, wholesale development at a later stage. And as a consequence of there, our second uh, Councillor Newman's uh, proposal to approve, uh, and I will uh, suggest, I will second that we approve the, uh, the development. Oh, thank you very much. It has been moved and seconded that this development is approved. I will go through. All in favour? Uh, Councillor Leonti? Yes, I'm in favour. 
You all in favour, Councillor McAvoy? Yeah, in favour. Councillor Turner, you're in favour. In favour. Councillor Newman, yes. Sorry, I'm in favour. Sorry, yeah. Councillor yeah. uh, Walker, you were wishing to come in. Yeah, I, I did want to come in, and um, oh, I'm sorry, in. I was trying to uh, get in, but it was difficult. Um, could I raise one or two issues with you on this? Because I think it's um, yet again one of these developments in the AONB, which we've been trying so hard to control. Mm. Um, if you grant this permission in principle, then the development will happen. It has all the uh, remains to be dealt with. That is the detail. Um, the report says that this is in accordance with the development plan, but quite clearly it is not in accordance with the development plan. The um, development plan main policy is ENV1, which restricts development in the area of outstanding beauty. There are, uh, as it points out, LIV1, but this is exactly the issues which we have had uh, in roughly where LIV1 uh, is takes is a secondary policy to the main EMV1. Um, there are a number of other issues relating to this scheme which I think you should consider. First of all, it's a very exposed site. If you go up the top of Heights Lane on the other side of the valley, this is completely exposed. Um, there's a very mature head and banking alongside the roadside at this point. Um, which it will be a, a very great loss if that um, is removed, which it will have to be if this development takes place. What you're in, it's been described as infill, but what in fact you're doing here is creating a ribbon development, ribbon development similar in the sense that, uh, you know, infill in between Happy Valley and uh, the um, main village at Roughly it would create ribbon development. And the other thing which you're not really taking account of, I think, is the access situation. You'll have seen that the Highway Authority raised all sorts of issues on yes. uh, access, mm -hmm. um, which can't be resolved at this stage because additional information is required. Um, you could well end up with the position of, of, of agreeing the principle of a housing development on this site uh, and then finding that uh, you know, you, you stuck with a very difficult access situation, which might require uh, extensive sight lines. But in principle, the, the main objection is it is against the area of outstanding natural beauty policy, which the committee of, of, of in the past, very recently, have, have said is, is one of the principal things that they wish to stick to. So yeah, I, I have um, no vote in the matter, but I would enjoin you to really consider whether you're, you're sacrificing the AOMB policy by granting the permission in principle for this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Walker. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Madam Chairman, if I can just uh, speak on behalf of Goldshire Booth, I agree yes, with everything that Donovan. I, I agree with everything that Andrew's just commented on, especially the AOMB uh, issue, and uh, also the, the 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 traffic issue along that. It is a very narrow road. road. Uh, it is the national speed limit as well at that point, and I think a further development on there would increase the traffic. And, and if the splays aren't done correctly, then it would cause issues with oncoming traffic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. So, uh, anybody else? No? So it has been moved. Chairman, Councillor Turner wants to speak, and then Councilor Catherine Turner. Hughes. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I listen to what Mr. Walker says, and I, I can have sympathy uh, with his comments. Um, however, uh, uh, having looked at the site, uh, my major concern was looking in long term uh, of the potential that may come there by putting two properties there. I can understand the splay, because if you look at where it is, uh, the splay will, in fact, when they put the two developments in and having to have the splay into it will will stay stop any possibility of an extension of putting further properties on there. You've got the four, four houses uh, in the court directly be, to it and then you've got the two houses directly past it. Uh, now, I feel uh, that... Uh, Putting two houses there will, in fact, stop 
um, the development possibilities uh, at a later stage. And whilst it is an area of outstanding uh, natural beauty, I do feel that two adequately built properties that are complementary to the system, to the locations that are there could be beneficial in the long term. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Turner. I mean, in this mission, we are not actually doing anything about no. the design of anything. This isn't part of a permission in yeah. principle. So, I mean, obviously, we'll get the opportunity later when the full the application comes to us again to yeah. look at the design. Am I correct in saying that? Yes. Because, yeah. Yeah. So we have actually taken the vote and it has been agreed that this application should be approved. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You don't want me to do it again, Joanne? No, it was just Catherine wanted to come in to speak, but I think she's she's put her hand down now, so I'm not sure whether she wanted you to. Put your hand back up, Catherine, if you want. <laughs> No, that, that's fine. If members have taken, I was just going to come in on some other points, but that, that's fine. We can raise them on the next one, perhaps, if they come up again. Right, thank you very much. Well, the next application is a very similar one, and it's uh, permission in principle, erection of up to four dwellings that land to the east of Osborne Terrace, Osborne Terrace, New Church in Pendle. Anybody who wishes to speak on this? I do, well, I would like to come in on this as well, if I may. Thank you. Um, yeah. As um, someone just said, it does raise similar issues because it is yet again a site in the area of outstanding natural beauty. It's a far less prominent site than the previous application, but um, nevertheless, it's the principle of development uh, extending into the area of outstanding natural beauty and, in this case, in the uh, into the countryside. Um, although it on plan looks like it's opposite the sewage works, and indeed it is, the sewage works is a very uh, low scale development. Um, and this is a uh, field at a slightly lower level than Osborne Terrace. And um, I think that uh, any development here would be highly intrusive into the countryside. And, you know, the, the points we made at the previous application that it might prevent development um, alongside it or behind it. Well, this one, you're beginning to advance further into the countryside. And uh, I don't really see, you know, if you accept the principle that's already been established on the previous one, where you can start to draw the line. Um, to me, though, the, 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 the really important point is the area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, if we start to lose these sites, um, what's to stop uh, sites in any of the villages that are in the area of outstanding natural beauty? And I, I, um, well, you've heard me on this theme many times before. I think it's very, very, very important that this committee actually upholds the AONB policy. Um, so I think that uh, again, this is quite clearly against policy, and you should refuse it on that ground, on those grounds. Thank you, Thank Madam, you Mr. Walker. Madam Chairman. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, I, I viewed this one as well. And listening to uh, Mr. Walker's comments, I support wholeheartedly in this particular one with his comments. Uh, as you look at the site, uh, there is a waterway at the front of it. The road itself is nothing more than a, uh, an enlarged dirt track. Uh, the cost uh, of uh, improving uh, the road that will have to be put there would make it totally uneconomic uh, for the building of just four houses. Uh, and uh, as this is uh, a PIP, uh, it will leave the opportunities open uh, for far larger opportunity at a later stage. Uh, I feel that as you look at the site, there is no uh, gas uh, supplied down there. There is a limit uh, as to the uh, availability of utilities to the site. The road itself uh, is little more uh, than a walkway. Uh, and to, to develop on this particular site with the, the topography as it like, falls back from it would be very damaging to the area uh, as there. And I would propose that we refuse this application um, on, um, 
on the, the fact of the area national natural beauty uh looking at uh, 102 on the transport issues um yes that would be overcome by um the, the, the objections that uh, lcc have brought forward yeah. um and and i'm sure that we shall be speaking uh, to uh, to catherine in a few moments uh, to come up with a satisfactory um objection uh and in for to support the refusal thank you madam chairman i think actually we could use the area of outstanding natural beauty yeah newman uh yeah i uh, i too uh, would not agree with this at all um as far as i'm concerned it is all the development in an area of natural beauty we have a new development already down there, uh, which I think will adequately fulfil the housing needs. And also, we did have uh, quite a tussle a few months back with the um, kennels a bit higher up, saying it. Oh, yes, we did. Yes. Uh, and I think this is on basically on the same lines. We are spoiling some more um, area of natural beauty. So I would... Um, I, I would not support this at all. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Madam, okay. Madam Chair, if I can make you a can, comment, Mr. please. Donovan, yeah. Um, as resident of Gosha Booth, uh, uh, I, I, I can agree with all the comments that have been made so far, and that is pretty much the um, feeling of, of the residents around that area. The, the land is owned uh, by a the landowner, uh, the area of development he's proposing, he also owns the field all the way around the back of the houses. And we feel that this is basically testing the water for further development in yeah. the future. And I do understand that each application is looked at separately. Yes. Mm. But with the, with the development we've already got in the area, 29 new properties being erected at the moment, and the issues that that has caused to the area, we feel that further development is just over developing that area completely. Right, thank you very much, Mr. Donovan. So, so it has been moved and seconded. Can I come in, Chair? Yes. All right. <laughs> thank you. Uh, just to go over some of the points that have been raised there, because I think we need to be quite clear as to, to what is a material consideration here and what, what's not. Um, the AOMB in itself does not obviously preclude development. Um, yes, it has to fit in with the area, and that is something that we would look at um, at the technical stage, along with the highways. Um, I know Councillor Turner raised some issues um, about the track and the, the cost. I mean, the cost would be something for the developer to look at in terms of viability. Yeah, yeah. And I presume that's why they put in for four dwellings, because that's, that's what they would need to achieve. Um, to make that viable um, but the airways issues and the costs is not for consideration um, at this time and now there is future development um, whether it enables it or, or, or prevents it we have to look at as you said each application on its own mm -hmm. merits um, the housing figures are not a maximum um, obviously if applications come through we can't say well we've, 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 we've done our bit for this area and we're not going to allow any more um, we have to look at it um, on the basis of, of what's been submitted to us. And I have to say, in terms of impact, I think this site is less obtrusive than, than, than the previous one we've just dealt with. Um, yes, it's open countryside, but policy lift one allows for that. I know Mr Walker doesn't necessarily agree with us, but... It, the, you know, the, our, we, our policies are written that way until we've allocated the sites. Um, we use policy live one um, and it is adjacent to existing housing so it is sustainable development um, so our view would be that this scheme should be approved so if we refuse it then it goes it will go to policy if, if you're refusing it purely just on impact on the AOMB um, we, we, it, that's, that's a difficult one for us to do at this stage as a permission in principle um, mm. Because we're only looking at whether that would be acceptable or, or not there. Madam Chairman. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, Power 117 
planning policies and decisions should promote an effective use of land in meeting the needs of homes and other uses. And while safeguarding the environment and ensuring safe and healthy con conditions. Now, as a consequence of that, uh, by uh, allowing the development of four, I can appreciate why they put four houses there, that I think will still be a negative cost uh, for the amount of work that's got to be done on, the, on, the, on the, the road, and they will have to come back with a further development. That's another matter to come later. Uh, however, I think that 117 uh, raises concerns um, on uh, the possibility of using that particular site. And I can understand where you're suggesting uh, that as the other one um, was an infill uh, between two separate blocks, uh, this is on far more open land and the developments that are in the immediate area, uh, there is one major development as you come down the road to it where the the, the tarmac road ends uh, and then there is not another development uh, for, for quite some hundreds of yards before you hit anything else as development. So this is far more inclined to be countryside and the field that goes around it as an L at the back of it uh, lends itself uh, for uh, aesthetically uh, for uh, the beauty of the open countryside to be seen on the topography of the hill coming down. I still feel uh, that this um, uh, is uh, in contrary to area of outstanding natural beauty and I'm going to pink on your brains, um, Catherine, as, as the lead officer today uh, to give us a, a good reason for refusing it. That is not actually Councillor Turner, Catherine's job. Her job, <laughs> if you put the facts in front of us, it is our job to say why we don't want something. Yes. Well, 117, 117 uh, does lead one to um, feeling uh, that one should use previously developed or brownfield lands. Um, and uh, it's not the greatest, it's not the strongest. I'm going to be blunt with you. Um, it's not the strongest, um, but uh, it's one that we can look to. I can see it going to uh, policy and resources, um, but I certainly agree wholeheartedly that this uh, is very damaging to do this particular development on this site. Overdevelopment? No? I don't suppose we could say it is overdevelopment. No. I, no. I, I wouldn't use that word anyway. Madam Chair, like. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion, Chairman, that uh, yes, it's sir. quite clearly contrary to the policy ENV1, which um, gives great weight to the protection of the areas of outstanding natural beauty, um, as does the national planning policy framework. And um, I mean, it, it is, uh, I would have thought you don't need to, as you didn't in the other case, in roughly refer it to policy and resources, because it is so clearly contrary to that mm. policy. Any other policy, and Catherine mentions LIV1, LIV1 is subject to other policies of the plan. And the other policy of the plan, which is overriding important here, is EMV1, which is the protection of the area of outstanding natural beauty. Thank you. Right, thank you very much, Mr Walker. So it has been moved and seconded that this application be refused on the grounds of the effect it would have on the area of outstanding natural beauty. Would that be a viable reason for refusal? Um, I, th I think on that on that basis, Madam Chairman, we would have to refer it to to policy and resources. Uh, yes, I, I think it's highly likely we would have to. So bearing that in mind that it's probably going to be referred to policy, 
It has been moved and seconded that this application be refused. Councillor Newman? I agree. Councillor yeah. Turner? Councillor Turner? Refuse. Refuse, right. Councillor McAvoy? Refuse. And Councillor Leonte? Refuse. Refuse. Councillor Crossley, refuse. So it has been moved and seconded and that this application be refused. All in favour. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Thank you. So that's the end of planning applications. Now, I have been given to understand that all we're doing in these meetings is planning. Is that true, Joanne? I'm sorry, Chair, there is one last item on the agenda, the reopening of Pendles Town Centres. What? It's not planning. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told we could, we're only planning. dealing with planning. Yes, we can go to the opening Pendles Town Centres. Madam Chairman. And we've got to get some pennies to do it with. Madam Chairman. Yeah. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Madam Chairman, uh, first of all, uh, I'm pleased that we're going to get some pennies, but they are pennies compared to uh, other people, and it uh, would have been nice to have had more than 6,400. However, £6,477 uh, will help us uh, to uh, develop and to bring people back into uh, Barrowford uh, town centres and high streets. Uh, now, obviously, we need to come up. It's an ERDF fund, so that ERDF will, as you are aware, uh, be very stringent on their um, auditing yeah, yeah. of the spending of the money. And as a consequence of that, could I suggest that obviously we can accept and welcome the 6477 today. However, um, could I suggest that we actually form a working group of the five borough councillors uh, to uh, be charged with going round uh, the businesses in and around Barrow Ford for some ideas for what they would like to see and suggestions of what they can see to bring uh, the residents back into Barrowford and from the outlying districts at the end of the COVID-19 uh, situation and try and turn this terrible situation we're in at the moment into some benefit in the long term. Um, if, we, if we had a, a working group of the five borough councillors and those five borough councillors perhaps then um, could undertake uh, to speak with businesses and resident and retailers and come back at the next meeting with some prospects, some projects uh, of where we could actually utilise the £6,477. Yes, certainly, yes, Councillor. Councillor McAvoy, were you? No, you're just waving at me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we ought to include the parish council as well. Yes, though. yes, yes, yes. Because the parish council is possibly more involved with local businesses than we are. So. Yeah. May, may, may I come back on that, Madam Chairman? I, I obviously intended to suggest that we include the, all the parish councils uh, and then we liaise with them to bring it all back into the next meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Madam Chair? Yes, sir, the Councillor Newman. Uh, I would uh, like to see this proposal go forward uh, as long as all the parish councils will be involved. Yes, uh, I think I, we've got to involve. Yes. Yes. Mm. Uh, okay. Okay then. So, right. uh, Madam Chair, could I make a proposal? Yes, certainly. Um, now, we haven't had a deputy chair on Western Parishes since November. No, we haven't, no. And I would like to propose uh, that Ken would take up that job um, as deputy chair until further notice. Chair, I don't know whether we could possibly put it on the agenda for next time. Yes, I, I think that's because I don't think we can just do it out of the blue like that. So, no, so. 
So we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Yeah. Yes. Yes, unfortunately, the deputy chairman got himself elected to parliament. Okay, as long as it is discussed and it is noted. Yes, it will thank be you. discussed, Councillor Newman, so. All right, thank you. Right. Anything else? No? So I'll now close the meeting. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.